sometimes life gives us things that is um, other than what we hope for or what we plan for. And we're the, sort of the first family that has a kid that doesn't have ten fingers, and so you don't really know how to deal with it. Like you know, you're you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't eat the food that you're not supposed to eat. Or what kind of aspirin did I take and how often did I take it those when they left those questions were in my head what did I do wrong I did this and they tell you all the good stuff but they never tell you what happens if your child is born with um, seven fingers and ten toes or you know if your child has any other um, disability or a difference uh, nobody tells you that Of course, it's your, it's your child. You don't want your child to suffer and have, you know, a physical difference. It's, it's, it's very hard. So when we found out that our baby girl has this condition, that night when we got home, my husband and I decided that we are going to be terminating the pregnancy. For a couple of days, I blamed myself. I, I shouldn't have, like, eaten this or maybe I should have taken my folic acid. After much uh, deliberation and thinking and really weighing down everything, all options, um, we decided to continue on with the pregnancy. So nobody actually saw his, his fingers and toes until he was being cleaned up and my husband saw his, his fingers and went, what's wrong with his hand? And the room just kind of froze. The doctor went back afterwards and he looked through all, all the ultrasounds really carefully and it just it was never detected you know, like you kind of blame yourself for all of these things but we just tried to focus on who he was and his personality and his character um, and we also just tried to figure out how to like how to explain it to our our older child who was just he was still three at the time just turned three so it was you know how do you explain it to him and then how do we kind of deal with it and absorb it eventually eventually it's it's just how it is and, you know, he's still perfect. Our music teacher for our school had come up to me and said, next year you're gonna be like starting the band because in grade seven and eight, everyone has to play a musical instrument. And my music teacher made the assumption that the only instrument that I would be able to play was the trumpet because you only need three digits on your right hand to play the trumpet. So she assumed that's the only thing that I could play. So because she made that assumption, I picked the instrument that I thought would be not only hard, but also that I would enjoy. So I picked the flute just because I wanted to prove her wrong. The fact that a lot of times people see Sean, they see him very active, they see him very friendly, very loving, and then sometimes they notice his hand, they're like, oh, you know, they ask what happened. And I just explained to them, you know, during birth it was a doctor's think it's from a lap band or hand was born out of the sack. They're just really impressed with how he, you know, does his work still, how he rides his bike, how he plays, and he's just very active regardless of how his hand is slightly different from other people. Actually, the daycare teachers had put him in another child a child who had um, a hearing aid, they put them aside and said that they're different. And that night, Sean came home, he's acting differently, he's usually very happy. And I asked him, what's wrong? He said, he showed me, he kept hiding his hand away. And I'm like, what's wrong? And he told me that he, um, his hand is broken. And that, you know, I really, that's the first time he actually addressed his hand was when he was two and a half years old. At first I didn't know how to answer it, but then again I said, you know what, God made you the way you are. You know, your hand works perfectly fine, you use it all the time, you eat with your hand, you draw pictures, you color, you, you know, you do lots of activities, you play basketball, you play football with your hand, and you do, you know, really well. And I don't want you to feel that anything is different. One of the things I had trouble with at first before my family got programs put in place was uh, typing and keeping up with all the other kids. And I found this also to be the same with tests because when I would write them by hand, I would, I would take much longer than anyone else. When the volume of writing got increased as she got into the higher grades. So we got her working on the voice recognition software. And with the program I'm in, it's an international school program. You have to, have to, have to be fast in what you are doing. And the advisements made by sick kids in the WAMPs has really allowed me to keep up with all my peers and get the grades that I want to because
because I'm able to keep up with them. My name is Jamie Irwin. I am 16 years old and I was born a partial right hand amputee. I am missing my radius uh, and I am missing a finger blow and there is some bone structure difference right there. Uh, also, there is a limited wrist mobility and I have no bending at the knuckles. I decided to come to Queens because um, I'd read a lot about the reputation of the university. Um, I'd seen a lot of photos. It looked like a pretty nice place. Um, a lot of friends of mine had been uh, thinking about coming here from my high school, so it sort of worked out okay that a bunch of us ended up coming out here. And we just never made it an issue. He just, I mean, I don't think, he has a really outgoing personality, um, and I think that maybe his personality is so outgoing because, because of his hand, because he doesn't, he has also not ever let it define him as who he is. But my daughter has the same kooky personality, so who knows? On the weekends, my friends and I, we watch a lot of sports. We go out, we go out for dinner. We don't get up to a lot of really outrageous shenanigans. We just sort of hang out and stuff. We're in our fourth year now, so the allure of going downtown and, and that kind of stuff is sort of worn off. We just like to hang out and uh, sort of take it easy now. We expose him to a lot of music, uh, a lot of culture. Um, he reads a lot. I mean, we're just a normal family. Uh, when people ask me about my hand, a lot of people assume that it happened in an accident or something like that, which wasn't the case. It was a pre-birth kind of thing. I usually just explain to people, yeah, that it happened to me before I was born. Just people would ask me exactly what happened. Um, as a kid, I didn't really know, so I didn't really know how to answer that question. You know, Ben's hand anomaly, I believe, is one in like 350,000. Like, it's not a common thing. So when we um, see somebody with uh, a hand anomaly, it's kind of like you belong to a little special club. Well, to me, normal is sort of a hard concept to define, mostly because normal is different for everybody. I mean, I would say my life is fairly normal, but it's different from everybody else's normal because I have seven fingers instead of ten. But I mean, I've grown up like this my entire life, so it's always been normal for me. Um, I don't, I mean, when people say, you know, you're, it's not normal what you have. It's normal for me, it's just not normal for somebody else. But then it's the same thing because having 10 fingers isn't normal for me either. Um, which is why I think sort of normal is hard to, it's a hard concept to nail down because there isn't really one normal, really. There's everybody's normal. When Ben was 18 months, we went on a trip to Maine. And we went to this, got on a boat, we went to this restaurant. And there was this really, really, I was, well, I don't know how old I was. Ben was 18 months, so I was 31, 32. And uh, we were with a bunch of friends, and this waiter came up to us. He was a young guy. He was really handsome, kind of looked a little bit like Matt Damon. And um, all of a sudden, he looks at Ben, and he says, Hey, little dude, we have the same hand. And I looked, and the guy had the exact same hand as Ben. And I remember getting very emotional, and I was crying. And then the guy came up to me, and he said, um, you know, it's, I've never seen an, another person with the same hand as me. And the guy got a little emotional too. And then he said, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, he, was, you know, he said, I'm in university or uh, I play college football. I have girls coming out my wazoo. Um, I, you know, have great parents. I play this. I, I play guitar. I, he said, don't, you know, he said, your son's going to be just fine. You just have to get him out there. And that's always kind of been the message, is to get him out there. But I'll never forget that, that young man and, uh, you know, how he basically made me feel that, you know, this isn't the end of the world. So when I play hockey, I have a modified glove and a modified stick. So what I have done with my stick, I came up with this myself. I was finding that even though I had a modified glove to help me hold the stick, I was still dropping in a certain amount. So what I did was I took the stick itself and I tied a really big glob of tape at the top and a really big one a bit further down, about a hand's width in the middle, and then wrapped it around, which I found gave me a much better grip. Another thing with my glove for my hockey modifications is that there is an insert to make it smaller so it completely supports my hand. And so once I attach my glove to my stick, there's never much slipping or sliding after that. And then I played just as the rest of the other kids do. 
initially when her younger brother decided that he was going to play when he was about four and she was six and uh, we initially thought that she probably would only try it and then not want to continue and she would quit but she just developed a love of it from day one and I think 11 years later she's still playing and will probably always play and uh, she's just a real go-getter out there on the ice and really except for the fact that she has a stick that looks a bit different and a glove that has an adaptation no one would know that there was uh, any issues with her arm. I guess I never really stop in hockey I'm a defenseman so I'm not so big on scoring the goals but I will shut you down if you come near me with that puck and you're on the other team. She's a very good hockey player she gets in people's way they don't like having her on the hockey, on the rink, because um, she won't let the forwards of the other team do what they want to do. She gets in their way so they cannot score. One thing that I like other people to know about me is that I'm not going to stop just because somebody says I can't. If somebody says no, if somebody says I can't, I will take that and I will work just as hard as I need to to get to that point to get there. I will find modifications, I will try my best, and I will do my best to participate as much as anybody else can. I'm not going to stop just because on a sheet of paper it says that I am disabled. I remember when she was uh, in one of the younger classes, small fry something, she couldn't get her fingers around the flutterboard because the flutterboard was too thick for her. So it was the middle of the winter, I drove all over the place looking for a flutterboard, finally found one at a pool shop, cost me 50 bucks, took Bridget down to Sick Kids. They cut away some of the material of the flutterboard that I bought so that it, Bridget would be able to grasp it in between her fingers and we marched into the pool the next night for swimming lessons and Bridget threw that flutterboard down at my feet and jumped in the pool with her class and grabbed the same flutterboard that everybody else was using. She didn't want to be different than anybody. She wanted to use the same equipment that everybody else did. Careful. Here we go. <laughs> All right, do you guys think we need some more water in here? Yeah! yeah. Um, force myself to work even harder and strive towards even bigger goals like rugby and lifeguarding and driving a car and getting really good grades because I try and force myself to do better than others. Without pushing her, we never encouraged her to hide her hand or to step back from trying new things. Obviously there was things that she had trouble with. It took her a little longer than the rest of her friends to tie her shoes. Uh, she could never do the overhead monkey bars. Um, I mean still she just got her driver's license and without thinking we bought a car that for her to boot around in and the um, the shift has a button on it and it's her right hand that is affected and she just, it's second nature to her. She just did it and I thought without having a thumb, how is she ever going to push that button to get it out of park and into reverse? She, they figure it out. <laughs>